Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on LiDAR with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with the College of Natural Resources and Environment at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and GeoTED UAS. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. This and the next three chapters demonstrate techniques for classifying points in a LiDAR point cloud. We begin in this chapter explaining why we classify points and types of classifications. In Chapter 19, we demonstrate classifying points interactively, followed by geoprocessing classification tools in Chapter 20. As a quick review, recall that LiDAR data is active remote sensing. Short pulses of light are sent out from a transmitter and received back as reflected points of light called returns. The instrumentation in a LiDAR sensor calculates the time each pulse takes to reflect and return to the sensor, which represents the distance traveled and, ultimately, elevation above mean sea level. The collection of these returns is called a point cloud. Points with only elevation values assigned are raw LiDAR data. Each return, or point in the point cloud, must be classified with a nominal value to be used in analysis or geoprocessing operations. Depending on the contract with the LiDAR acquisition firm, the point cloud could be provided to the customer as raw data, data with some classification accomplished, or data with only ground points identified. In each of the LiDAR tiles downloaded in chapters 7 through 9, the point classification varied. In the three regions seen here, different numbers of classes are present, either because that's all the government entity requested from the vendor, or those classifications are all that the government entity had processed before the data was made available to the public for downloading. Variation in point classification can also occur if the classification scheme used is not in accordance with the American Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing LAS specifications. These standards are not required by any governmental regulation, but they've been adopted by the U.S. Geological Survey, and LIDAR data stored by the United States National Map must use these specifications. As a result of the USGS requirement, Many state, local, and foreign governments are following the ASPRS standards. These are the most recent LAS specification classification codes. LAS classification codes are updated by the ASPRS on a regular basis, so be sure to check the ASPRS website before doing any classification. We've already seen some of these classification codes in our three study areas. Others in this list are meaningful to specific regions. For example, codes 13 through 16 are for wires and related equipment. These are overhead wires and can be picked picked up by a LiDAR acquisition, but they might not be found in every acquisition. LiDAR returns can be acquired from flying birds or when grain is being harvested from a field. Both situations are not essential parts of LiDAR evaluations because the event occurred once or for a very short period of time, so these events could be classified as high noise. User-definable classification codes 64 to 255 are a very important part of classification schemes because individual regions are unique, and these also allow flexibility for local, state, and federal governments to apply schemes specific to their region. One example of a unique situation is the center pivot irrigation equipment in the San Luis Valley dataset. Classification of this dataset could include a new code in the 64 to 255 range for that feature. However, this must be done by the owner of the dataset. It cannot be done in ArcGIS Pro. Before attempting any classification, it's important to become familiar with the area of interest and the LiDAR point cloud. We're familiar with our three areas of interest, so let's head to the next chapter and get started with classifying LiDAR points interactively.